So, today we're once again gonna go through Thinking in Bats by Annie Duke, which is a pretty, 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 pretty cool book about a few things, about a few cool things, and I really am looking forward to going through it once again, and this is the third episode, just for the context. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you after the intro, as always. There is no sound, yes. Super duper great. <laughs> <laughs> and with that being said, hello, welcome back to the next episode of the Self Development with Tactics podcast. I'm your host, Christopher Wolk, and I'm actually really, really, really looking forward to going through this, even though I guess, I guess that I'm having a slight problem, and this slight problem might be that, yes, it's not that much to go. I know it's just a little tiny bit left that I uh, wasn't quote unquote able to go through yesterday, um, but yeah, it is fine, it is good. Uh, it is what it is. Um, I hope that you're doing fine, by the way, and I also hope that your loved ones are also fine health-wise and happiness-wise and all those things. Um, these times are strange, you know, but I am able to go to school in a week, which is something that I like, even though I am just really uh, curious how it is going to be like after, I think, six weeks, which I don't know, like they pass so quickly, like it is insane. They really pass quickly. Um, but I'm super duper happy to see the people there and, and, and meet my friends and, and meet the people once again because I love them. I really do. Uh, are there similar areas I can look toward? Blah, 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 blah. The thing is, I don't know where I stopped yesterday. I guess. I know. I guess. This is my hot take. Um, I'm just... Hmm, hmm, I think I'm just gonna start uh, from the highlight there. Are there similar areas I can look toward to gosh whether similar beliefs uh, whether similar beliefs to mine are true question mark which as as I've been also talking about it yesterday is a really good question because there might definitely be a different area a different scenery a different whatever you want to call it that embodies quite the exact same thoughts as you're having just in another context and there you can then actually see of course I mean if this area is a completely different one, if it is just something completely different than what you are referring to, then I don't know how smart it is, you know. Then I really don't know what what you're expecting as well, quite, you know. So uh, I think there should be some similarities. But I mean, as he says as well, or she says as well, whether similar beliefs to mine are true in similar areas. What sources of information could I have missed or minimized on the way to reaching my belief? Which is, I think, a really, really good one and a really important one, again and as well. Because, um, yeah, I mean, there is just such a lot of different sources, you know, especially when you think about the web per se and alone. There are so many different websites and so many different articles and platforms as well, if you just also count YouTube and Vimeo and, and all these other platforms where you can gain information and knowledge and whatnot. So it indeed is, I think, as well a good question. What are the reasons someone else could have a different belief? What is their support and why might they be right instead of me? This is a good one, you know, especially also because of the fact that you probably are then able to see whether, um, yeah, whether they are right or not, you know, because if you really consciously think about it, then you might come to the conclusion that they are absolutely fucking wrong. What other perspectives are there as to why things turn out the way they did? How can you view things in a different light? Um, whether it is actually a better light and or a worse light. I think it is a nice experiment to see what it is like and uh, also how it feels like to have that maybe or something. Telling someone how a story ends encourages them to be resultas, to interpret the details to fit that outcome. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm seeing it every single fucking day at this point in time. And I have to really highlight that. Um, because as I've also been talking about in the last episode, probably, can I please highlight it? No, I can't because of whatever reason. The thing is, um, as I've been also talking about in the last episode and the, uh, the episode before, at this point in time, I'm learning maths and also communication design and also just different sorts of things for my A-levels and or SAT. I'm sorry. The thing is... Um, if I know the answer um, when it is about maths, for example, when I know the answer, then I am going to see how this answer was formed really, really, really easily. But if I don't know the answer, then I really consciously have to think about what the answer might be, you know. 
But of course, like if I know it, then I'm probably going to do everything to make the things that I've already written down, for example, just kind of similar to what the answer is, you know, and or how the right quote unquote way is to get to the answer. It's a really fucked up thing. It really is. Skepticism is about approaching the world by asking why things might not be true rather than why they are true. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think indeed. These are really good ones. I enjoy them. And why do I get such a lot of messages? I do get such a lot of messages. <laughs> By the way, um, yesterday, pretty funny thing. Um, yesterday, I've also been recording and I've uh, also been having my phone besides me. And at, at some point, I think I've just um, checked my phone and stuff. And in the recording, I've seen that I think I was just two minutes straight on my fucking phone uh, texting somebody like... I mean, like, it adds up. It really does add up to quite a huge amount of time, I guess, I believe. Thinking in bets and body skepticism by encouraging you to examine what you do and don't know and what your level of confidence is in your beliefs and predictions. It is a recognition that everything you believe about the world is not true. Yes, I know I'm definitely also going to see uh, those biases that you are embodying and that you're having in you if you just want to talk about it in that way. Some sort of. Yes, I'm recording. Everything is fine and everything is good to go. Um, and all sorts of things, you know, you just, I think in general, asking questions, whether it is this question, whether it is another question, they are really important. You know, you, you can really figure out a lot, of, a lot of things by asking just a lot of questions. But different ones, you know, not always the same, but different ones. It's important. You need to be particularly skeptical of information that agrees with you because you know that you are biased to just accept confirming evidence. Yes, as well. This is also one of the reasons, and I've been talking about it before, that if you want to gain information, if you want to gain knowledge about, especially when it is about food, um, what is healthy, what is not healthy, then it is always a good idea to search for the um, the negative way in terms of like, okay, why is bread not good for me? First of all, search for that. And second of all, search for why is bread good for me? And then you're probably going to figure out what the really, what the reality is like and what the real deal is like, because you're going to see like, I don't know, uh, but of course you can't go through every single article and not every single article is also going to be just trustworthy and stuff. But you're going to just see the... Um, overview of what it actually is like you know because if this article says okay it is this and it is that and whatnot and the other article confirms that you can just be like well uh, probably you know and if just the negative points are then just i don't know just some some strange things or just some things that you don't really care about for example i don't know what, what could it be you know what could be something that you don't really really care about and or just something that, which is, I think, relatively often the case, even though I'm not betting on it, it's just, I don't know, 5% um, confidence there, to be honest. <laughs> um, just that often it is the case that there are parameters and variables that are just variable, and therefore you can't just say, okay, this is this and this is that, you know, because every bread is differently, you know, it just really depends on what bread you eat and it really depends on what ingredients this bread is having. And of course, then there is going to be healthy bread and then there's going to be a non-healthy bread and all sorts of things like important to, to, to notice and important to point out, I think. When you think about the past and the future, you engage deliberative mind, improving your ability to make a more rational decision. If regret occurred before a decision instead of Instead of after, the experience of regret might get you to change a choice likely to result in a bad outcome. I'm willing to read it once again. When you think about the past and the future, you engage deliberative mind, improving your ability to make a more rational decision. I see. Yes, indeed. I know. We want to make good decisions in the future. If regret occurred before a decision instead of after, the experience of regret might get you to change a choice likely to result in a bad outcome. Yeah, I think in general, just um, feelings um, can really, really influence you in your decision making um, to really bad decisions, actually. But also, I think on the other hand, just really good decisions as well. Like, I think it is some sort of a compass that we all are having. And it's, you know, we shouldn't always trust it. It's not always a good one. <laughs> really not. <laughs> But um, but yeah, I think it is what it is, and I think we just have to 
look past that and and actually see when we are making decisions based on our feelings, whether it is regret, whether it is love, whether it is something else, whether it is something positive or negative to just kind of uh, group that a bit. Yeah, we're always going to make decisions based on that. We're just really not rational. It is what it is. We Can we do something about that? Maybe. I'm not quite sure though. Ask yourself a set of simple questions at the moment of the decision designed to get to get future you and past you evolved. What are the consequences of each of my options in 10 minutes? Ah, they're going to be guile. Yes, sure. Um, they're going to be guile in terms of like they're going to be good. It's not one by one translation. Don't use it if you're just uh, learning German and stuff. Two completely different uh I just would like to, well, anyway, two completely different meanings. I know it depends on the context, so please don't use it. Quite. Unless you know the context. Ask yourself this simple set of questions. The first question is, um, where is it? What are the consequences of each of my options in 10 minutes, in 10 months, and in 10 years? How would I feel today if I had made this decision 10 minutes ago, 10 months ago, and 10 years ago? And I think this is a really, 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 really important part of the whole thing there. And I hope that I'm going to remind myself on that. And I hope that I'm going to talk about it just more often. And th- By the way, this is the beauty of books, as I've seen. Of course, I could go through articles, but the thing is I have to search for articles to, to, to get the information. But a book is much more of a broader medium. You know, there, there definitely is a difference in positive sides and negative sides of book versus web. Of course, there is. Um, but I think this, for example, is a beauty that you're going to find some things you haven't been looking for and haven't been searching for and all those things. But if I, for example, let's just actually uh, stick with eating things. You know, if I uh, have just a huge amount of candy and chocolate and whatnot in front of me and I think... Should I really eat it or should I not really eat it? It's about the whole thing, you know, to just make it a little bit more dramatic and a little bit more like, yeah, uh, how should I say, like, uh, influencing. Yes, this is a good word. So then if we ask ourselves what is going to happen or how I'm going to feel about it or what are the consequences going to be in 10 minutes, um, maybe I'll just... It depends. I think you could be straight in the whole... Uh, in the whole sequence of eating the candy but you could also have already finished um, if you've already finished then you're probably going to feel not that good because it is gone there's nothing left and it's been good and what and you might be craving for more hmm. um, if you're right in the eating part then you're probably going to feel pretty good about yourself and you're probably going to be like pretty happy because it is nice and it is well and is good good things in 10 months how are you going to feel about it um I do just miss a little tiny thing there, you know, 10, 10 weeks or 10 hours, something like that, because probably in 10 hours, you're probably not going to feel that good, you know, probably going to shit yourself and stuff. But in 10 months, I guess you won't care. I know it's nearly a year and stuff. And so you're not going to care about eating something or have been eating something there and whatnot, if this makes sense, which does not. But but yeah, anyway. Um, And then in 10 years, no, definitely not. You're probably going to give a fuck about it. If I had made this decision 10 minutes ago, then um, you are either going to feel good or bad. You know, it still depends if you are in the process or not. Quite. Or does this make sense? Yeah, it kind of does make sense. 10 months ago, um, I think you wouldn't really care. So I think it really depends. I mean, if it is just a major decision, then, then it could really have consequences up to 10 years. I know if you just decide to make something and do something that's completely just fucking dumb. Think about your happiness as a long-term stock holding. Not focus on day-by-day movements. Strive for a long, sustaining upward trend in your happiness stock. Yeah, and I think in that sense we should really think about relationships. You know, if... I mean, of course... uh, you might think like, well, I'm having a relationship and the relationship isn't that good anymore and stuff like that. And and uh, and you might feel like, well, uh, of course, there's going to be pain in the now if I just end it, you know, but you're probably and or maybe you don't know. Um, this is the problem. We don't know. We don't know about the future and we we know about the past, but the past is not really, I don't know, representative in terms of the future, I would say at least. The thing is, 
Um, yes, in the future, this relationship could be really good. It could be, but it could also be just really horrible. And I don't know. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Consider a broad range of possibilities for how the future might unfold to make your best guess at the probability of each of those future occurring. Those futures occurring, I'm sorry. You're already making a prediction about the future every time you make a decision, so you would better, you're better off if you make that explicit. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And just, I think you should go into the far future, you know? Should I start smoking? No, absolutely fucking not. It's not a good decision based on what your future self is going to say. Quite. And also your past self, if you just uh, go back to the other thing, like it is a fucking dumb idea. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. <laughs> um, uh, imagine yourself looking back from the destination, figure how you got there. Remembering the future is a better way to plan for it or plan for it. Yes, indeed, a really amazingly good question. Like, if you know that it's not working, okay, anyway. Um, if you're overweight and stuff, and yeah, I mean, there is a process, there is always a process, whether it is a good outcome or a bad outcome, there's always a process. But if you just have seen like, okay, um, I'm overweight and it just probably is based on me eating shit all the fucking time, then um, you maybe should not be doing this in the future. Once again, quite, quite, but no. Your decision making improves when you can, mm, what? When you can more vividly imagine the future, free of the distortions of the present. Indeed. Because the thing is, you might feel good today and just really, really take bad decisions or make bad decisions. Because of that, because you're feeling bad and because you're feeling uh, strange and, and whatnot and whatever it might be. Uh, yeah, really something to look out for, I guess. Your decision making improves when you can more... Oh, I'm sorry. Negative vis visualization makes you more likely to achieve your goals. Imagine obstacles in a way of reaching your goals. Start a pre-mortem by imagining why you failed to reach your goal. Then imagine why. All those reasons why you didn't achieve your goal help you anticipate potential obstacles and improve your likelihood of succeeding, which I think is, is a really good idea. I think it really indeed is a good idea. Um, Yeah, yeah, I just think it is a good idea. Yeah. Even though, like, of course, uh, you could just really drive you crazy by just always thinking in a negative way. But yeah, I don't assume that you're gonna do that, you know. Because you're smart, you're a fucking smartest person. Uh, the likelihood of positive and negative future must add up to 100%. When you see how much negative space there really is, you shrink down the positive space to a size that more accurately reflects reality and less reflects your natural optimistic nature. Um, and yeah, you know, I don't know. I still believe that just being uh, optimistic just in general and on a daily basis and on a natural basis as well, like, uh, I think it is a good idea. I think it is a good thing. Um, I don't know. There is, there's like, of course, if it is delusional and if it is like, okay, I'm only seeing fucking flowers all day fucking long, then, then I don't know. It's, it's, it's just not going to be good. I know, obviously, but I don't know. I think healthy optimism is always something good because, um, because, yeah, I think y you you could maybe even include believing in yourself with optimism, you know, because if you feel like that you're going to be able to do it in the future and that everything is going to be fine and whatnot, then yeah, okay, you probably are believing a little bit more in your abilities than if you would be like, well, uh, it's going to be so bad, I'm going to die and, and stuff like that, you know, which by the way is also something that I've been working on quite you know, to really believe in my capabilities and just also looking back to what I've already done and actually kind of letting myself believe that I'm not a fucking dumbass person. You know, I can do shit. So, so, so yeah, I think it's, it's, it's also a good thing to just step into the past. Not always, not all the time. It's not good, but sometimes stepping into the past and see what you did and then see what happened and whether there's something negative or positive, but it could really uh, kind of change, even though, as I said before, um, it's not really a good representation of what the future is going to be like, you know, if you're looking at the past, but it can still help you to navigate through the future if there is just some things that you know are dumb and shitty and you should not be doing them. But yeah, I'm going to end the episode there. And the question of today, the question of today is going to be, 
could you, and I'm going to take it once again, um, could you say something to somebody you know is going to make them really, really, really happy? Why are you not saying that? And, and why haven't you been thinking about it? And more things. You know, that just somehow have something to do with that. But yeah, with that being said, I wish you the best health of happiness and also success and also hope that you're going to remind yourself and you're going to be remembered, which basically means your legacy and basically means just being a nice person than being remembered as a nice person, which is always a nice thing. I'm sorry if I haven't cut that out, which uh, the probability of is relatively high, I think. Well, yeah, anyway, uh, three other questions that I'm having for you are, why are you here? What are you trying to change? And what is bothering you the most? These three questions are hopefully going to show you your purpose and maybe even a business idea, which is always a nice and good thing. But yeah, with that being said, I'm hopefully going to see you the next time. And bye-bye. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. I really, truly appreciate that. So bye-bye.